Hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. Merry Christmas and Happy Friday Reads. I am here hanging out on actually Thursday, December 23rd. I'm recording this two days in advance. Instead, I usually record this on a Friday and then post it on a Saturday. I am going in advance a little bit because we're going to be very busy tomorrow and uh, Saturday as well with, with Christmas. So I'm hanging here with my kids. You can see Jamie and Guinness is lying down next to me right here. And we wanted to say Merry Christmas and do my usual Friday Reads video. And I thought it would be fun to wear my little Santa hat and do all of that. If you celebrate Christmas, Merry Christmas. If you don't, ignore the hat, ignore the tree, and uh, ignore the greetings and the red and green and all of that stuff. And uh, we'll do our, our Friday Reads. The thing I really want to talk about first is that today, Thursday, when I'm filming this, they announced that Joan Didion died. And this really hit me very hard because I was a very moody teenager. I tended to get attitude about assigned reading in high school, which is funny because I loved to read. I just didn't like being told what to read because a lot of the time I wouldn't like what we were assigned to read. So I tended to get attitude about it. Joan Didion broke through because I was living in San Francisco when I went to high school and I took a class called Literature of Our Place, our place being California. And Joan Didion, of course, came up and we read slouching toward Bethlehem. And I didn't know anyone could write like that. It was mind blowing to me. I was just awed by her skill as a writer. And I didn't get back to read another one of her books until years later in 2005 when The Year of Magical Thinking was published. And I did read that and I loved it. I, I think that should have won the Pulitzer Prize for a biography or memoir. I think it's a beautiful book. It's one of my favorites. And it, it didn't. I, I can't remember what one in its place, but I, I just love that book. And then I read Blue Nights. I read um, the book that you published earlier this year. I have the name of it right here. If you bear with me a second, I can tell you what it is. Let me tell you what I mean. I just think she's a great writer. And I, it, it hit me very hard that we, we lost her. So uh, I, I already talked with someone on Twitter who said that they had managed to get a copy of Slouching Toward Bethlehem at their library. If you're unfamiliar, I'd say go to Slouching Toward Bethlehem or The Year of Magical Thinking. Those are great places to start with her writing. I've never read one of her novels and I've thought about it a lot, but I hear mixed things about them. So if you've read one of her novels, please let me know what you thought of it in the comment section down below. But that really hit me very hard. The other thing I want to talk about before we get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video, and I actually have a lot to report in the Friday Reads portion of this video, by the way, is that I got a question from Sarah Wallace, and then somebody else followed up on it. But Sarah Wallace said, you've mentioned your note-taking on index cards a few times. I would enjoy a video where you describe your approach to note-taking. I'm always intrigued by the different approaches of different readers. So I'm not going to do a whole video on it, but I will talk about it here. So I pulled three books that I took notes on recently. Now, Gone with the Wind is a bit of an outlier because I didn't do all of my 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 typical approach, but basically one side of the index card was for incidents of racism that I found. And by the way, I only made it 566 pages into the book. I didn't finish. So all that for just the first half. And at a certain point, I had to start glossing over things because there were too many. So one side was just for racism. The other side was for any other interesting thing that popped up or popped into my head. And at a certain point, I ended up taking rage notes in the book itself just to kind of argue with it. But that was my approach with the notes for Gone with the Wind. Anything racist on one side of the index card, anything else on the other. That's not my usual approach. I kind of deviated to that for Gone with the Wind because that was a very specific thing I was looking at and interrogating. Power of the Dog is much more like my standard approach. So I ended up using two index cards. I'll show you the second one in a moment. So I didn't think I was going to take too many notes. So I wrote in my normal handwriting size on this one side and uh, ended up needing to go to a second. I, I usually try to write a little bit tiny, but a lot of the time that ends up being a waste because you don't take a whole lot of notes. So in this case, I needed more room and I, I you know, I'm glad I didn't write tiny because I, I, I can read all of this, those things. So on the one side, I write down quotes that really stand out to me, ideas that sort of stand out to me, like 
the first quote on this, and then I have the page number for reference. So, it is not easy or desirable to slough off old habits or to forget who you are. A Burbank with the best connections in Boston, back east in Massachusetts. That's page eight. The next note is, but his habits and appearance required strangers to alter their conception of an aristocrat to one who can afford to be himself. That's page nine. And then the next note is, Phil slash love slash loneliness, page 12, because I felt like that could be something that was really definable about his character. And then the, the next one is a quote, a world so vast and hostile to individual hope. That's on page 13. And that's kind of continues. So just interesting things that jump out at me, interesting quotes that I feel like are going to be important. And on the other side, once I'm reading, I I'll try to pay attention to things that repeat. So what I have on the back of the book, kindness, was something I immediately noticed being repeated. So anytime I hear a reference to kindness or being a good person, I write down the page number. Being a sissy, the idea of being a sissy or being called a sissy comes up a lot in The Power of the Dog. So I wrote that down next and wrote down any instances. Sometimes I will go back if it's not too burdensome. Uh, like with Bronco Henry. I think by the fourth or fifth time Bronco Henry got mentioned, I was like, I want to track how many times that gets mentioned in this book. So I wrote down Bronco Henry, went back to the beginning and uh, noted down all the instances. And you can see of anything I was tracking in this book, that is the one that was noted the most. Uh, failure, being imposter, uh, grasping or toward money in particular. And um, the idea of purity was also something that I ended up tracking on that and then i took a second card index card and i did write tinier on this one and it just kept going with more I, more quotes and the other things that jumped out like the last note uh that i wrote for the book was sacrifice slash life and that's page 275 i don't think that's a spoiler um and then so most of it is quotes but the idea of a good woman and a bad woman from page 265 was something I wrote down as well. So that's how I do it. It's not the best way. Another example was conversations with friends. I had more fun taking notes for this book than I did reading the book itself because I feel like Sally Rooney does a lot of interesting things. Now, this one you can see I wrote really, really tiny because I guess I had an idea that things were going to be... I was going to need a lot of room. So on the one side, I'm tracking things. And on the other side, I'm writing down interesting things that jump out in little quotes. So the things I was tracking in this book, the first one was the idea of performance, because the characters in this book are sort of performance artists. But the idea of performing instead of being who you are comes up a lot. So I started tracking any instance of that. And that is the one that I notice the most what was really interesting about that was that there's a period where okay so there are a lot of instances of the idea of performance through the first 124 pages and then they go away for 100 pages it doesn't come up again until page 228 so for 100 pages the character the main character of this book whose name is escaping me uh francis isn't worried about being performance. Well, what happens in that 100 pages? She's kind of happy. So it helps me clue into things like that. The idea of being a normal person, which I thought was particularly interesting because Sally Rooney's next book was called Normal People. Um, the idea of acclaim, being genuine, uh, power dynamics, uh, love, question mark, all things like that were, were just items that I tracked. And then if there's something that I think is particularly interesting, I will put a star next to it. For instance, I put a star next to this quote. I liked having other people observe their warmth toward me. And I also put a star on the idea of suffering on page 263. So that is my way of taking notes. It's not the most elaborate. It's not the most comprehensive. There are probably much better systems out there. But for me, it works. It, I have to have a pen handy. It just keeps me thinking about the book and noting things about it. And like I said, sometimes, not every book. This is why I don't take notes with every book I read anymore. But not every book is as interesting as this when you're trying to keep track of things. And it's interesting because it helps me clue into things that the author is doing. Like, I think it's pretty deliberate that that idea of performance disappears for 100 pages in this book. Didn't end up liking the book, but I liked the mechanics of what Sally Rooney was doing. I'd say The Power of the Dog was a much more successful book overall. 
but you know, it is what it is. So those are three big examples of me taking notes. If you have your own system or recommendations uh, about note taking with books, I would love to hear about it in the description box down below. Or if you have a channel, feel free to do your own video and let us all know what uh, you do to take notes or keep track of things that you find interesting in a book. Let's get into the actual Friday Reads portion of this video because like I said, I have a lot to report. So where we left last week, I was reading two books. The audio I was listening to was The Blind Assassin by Margaret Atwood. I was coming up against a wall because the due date for the audio on Libby was coming up and I had to make a lot of progress. I didn't actually finish the audio. I kind of, so here's what I did. I made it a good chunk of the way through the book on audio. And being honest, I liked this book. I wasn't really loving it. I started thinking that this, and maybe this is also a product of the fact that I was rushing my way through it toward the end. It starts to feel like this book is way longer than it needs to be and way more complicated than it needs to be. And that started getting a little bit irritating. So once I lost the audio on Libby, I picked up my handy copy of the book and I admit I skimmed the rest of the way to the last few chapters and then focused in on them pretty hard. I wasn't entirely right about what happens in the end. I can't talk about what happens in the end. I was close. I'll give myself credit for that, but I wasn't 100%. I think one of my, I had two guesses. One of them was correct. The other one was incorrect. And I don't want to talk about which one was right and which one was wrong. Um, you'll just have to wonder if you've read the book because I don't want to give spoilers for anyone. But I do feel like this book is definitely longer than it needs to be and more complicated than it needs to be. Because when I lost the audio, I was talking to Joel about it. And he's like, well, do you think you know what it's about? And I was like, well, yeah, I think it's about how these, these it's about empowerment and capitalism and these women don't really have much say in their lives, so their agency is kind of taken away from them. And I think that that's what I'm getting from the book. And then it just feels like, so I had gotten that from the first half of the book. I didn't need all of the little detail. I, there could have been less. It could have been less complicated. That's my interpretation of it. Still, Margaret Atwood is a tremendous writer. I'm glad I finally got around to this. This was my second Margaret Atwood book ever. I'm looking forward to reading more books by her. This was something I did for the Montana Book Company's reading challenge for 2021. You had to read a Margaret Atwood book. And this is the one I chose. Well, I, I let people in Instagram stories decide which one I was going to do between this and Oryx and Crake. This was the winner. I still want to get to Oryx and Crake, hopefully someday soon, because this I've had since like 2000, 2001 and hadn't gotten around to it. So I admit I skimmed a portion of it, but I think I definitely got the point. I got the sense of the book. And I, I do think it was a little bit too long and a little bit too complicated. But I know a lot of people are going to say you don't, a lot of people complained that they don't think that you get a good full experience of the book if you're doing audio. I think the audio was fine. You just really had to orient yourself to the book in the beginning. And then after that, it was fine. You do have to actively listen while you were doing the audio. So I couldn't be distracted. I had to make sure I was able to pay attention when I listened to it. I liked it. I didn't love it, being honest. Once that was done, I was thinking about whether or not I was going to do another audiobook this year. Because I had said that once that was done, I would pick up the love songs of W.E.B. Du Bois. Well, I don't want to... That's a really long book. It's like 28 hours on audio. So I'm thinking I'm going to hold off until 2022. But then I was thinking, but I have time this week. Is there anything I want to do? So I started scrolling through the saved books I had on Scribd and Damnation Spring jumped out at me. I only had three hours left. If you follow along, you know the story with this. I had started it and I was dragging it out. I was listening to this audio for like a month and not finishing it. And that was sort of hitting into the reading slump I had this fall where I was feeling like anxious and a little stressed about a lot of a lot of things and ended up stalling out completely. And part of what was bothering me about this book was there's there are a lot of bad things going on. There are trigger warnings galore with this book. There's um, a dog does die. And that I knew was coming. I knew it was coming. And once it came, that's when I put this book down. And I did want to try to circle back. So I'm glad I finished it in the year because this is a very good book. It was the wrong book for me to reading at that point in time when I was really stressed because it triggered all of that anxiety and really brought it to the forefront. And the dog dying is hard. 
and because that's a thing for me, I want to mention it for anybody who has a thing. It's hard. It, I had to skip a chapter that dealt with that. And also, there are a lot of birth defects and miscarriages and things like that because this really deals with the environment. It's set in 1977 and it, with, in a family that has depended on logging. So because they depend on logging, they are really beholden to the company that owns the, all of the logging in the area. And they have been dumping chemicals. They say they're safe. It's very Aaron Brockovich. They say they're, they're safe, but clearly they're not. And it's easy from a modern perspective to look back and say, yeah, you don't want to be around these chemicals, but they wouldn't have known better back then. So one thing that really jumped out is this is a very em empathetic book. Ash Davidson has a really palpable empathy for all of the characters, no matter what they are. There's a there's one character who's just, just a jerk. He's a real son of a gun to use... Uh, God, did I just say son of a gun? I did. So he's not a great person, but Ash Davidson seems to understand the desperation. So as much as you hate him, you understand what he's doing and why, but you, you really just hate him anyway. But it's still a very empathetic book, and I did really enjoy it a lot. I'm glad I finished it. It's just trigger warnings. It, so it's not the easiest book if you have any of those things, um, like I do or did. But I'm glad I finished it, and uh, especially since I managed to get it in in the same calendar year when I uh, had originally picked it up. The other book I had been working on in my last Friday Reads video was Work Like Any Other by Virginia Reeves. I finished this last night and I really loved it a lot. I've been having an emotional hangover from this book all day long. It's a really great book. I absolutely recommend it. I mentioned it in my video about um, books I read in this year that I hope more people discover. And I'll put a link to that in the description box down below. Actually, I put Damnation Spring on that as well. And... Uh, Definitely check it out. This is something I hope more people will pick up and read because it was long listed for the Booker Prize in 2016. But I feel like I had never heard of it until the Montana Book Company put it in my hands this year. Uh, it met a brief on their reading challenge to read a local author. Um, it's set in Alabama in the early 1900s, but Virginia Reeves is a Montana author, so it fit for that. And this is actually another really empathetic book that understands all of the different characters, all of their different motivations, and how complex they are. And it's about forgiveness and retribution and atonement and relationships and anger and the ways in which anger can poison things over time. It's, it's a really well done and beautiful book. And again, it just really understands and crawls into all of the different heads of its characters, even ones that would seem to be unlikable or be doing unlikable things. It has a component where it really deals with race and the guilt that, say, white characters could feel because of that. Um, and I don't want to give too many spoilers about that plot line, but it's really interesting. And so many complicated things happen in the book, but it all pulls together beautifully in the end. I would absolutely recommend this book. I might talk a little bit more about that book uh, once I've had a little bit more time to digest. Uh, I think you will be hearing about it in my favorite reads of 2021, so stay tuned for that. The only book I need to read before the end of the year, and I use the term need a little bit loosely, is Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin. So this one is up. Uh, you can tell the texture of the book is really interesting, which is why I keep feeling it. I'm going to stop doing that right now. But so this is what I'm going to pick up next, and this is the only thing I need to get in during the rest of the year because it will be the last book for the Montana Book Company's reading challenge for 2021. So that's what I'm going to be picking up maybe tonight. And we'll see. I don't know how much reading I'm going to get done this weekend because obviously I'm filming this on Thursday again. So tomorrow's Christmas Eve, then Christmas Day is Saturday, and then Sunday uh, is Boxing Day. We chill and uh, relax on Boxing Day. That's how we roll. And then Monday we have to go to Washington for Guinness's uh, follow-up appointment. So Fingers crossed for that. But I did pick up a di another audiobook because once I finished Damnation Spring, I had a lot of time during the week, and uh, that is Holding by Graham Norton. It's funny because it's sort of like a cozy mystery, but like a cozy mystery that's a little bit dark, which means it's right up my alley. I'm, I'm enjoying it a lot. It's witty. It's smart. It's not afraid to be dark and a little bit bleak and have characters go through difficult things. So I am enjoying it so far. I think I'm roughly 30 to 35% of the way through the audio, which is read by Graham Norton himself, and he does a very good job. It is set in an Irish town called Deneen, and a body is found. And at, at the point I met, they haven't identified the body. I have a feeling there's going to be a twist because everyone assumes it's a man who had mysteriously left town abruptly 
many years earlier. And town secrets are starting to bubble to the surface because everyone is making assumptions based on the uh, an other assumption that the body is that man's. So I'm going to work my way through that again. I don't know how much progress I'm going to make. I'm going to pick up Go Tell It on the Mountain and see how much progress I make with that. And if those end up being the last books I read in this year, I will be totally fine with that. But I'd love to hear what your reading week has been like, what you've been up to, what you've been loving, hating, all of that stuff. We watched King Richard this week, and I liked it a lot, but Anjanu Ellis is the one who jumped out for me. Everybody had me primed for Will Smith. Anjanu Ellis is the one that I really loved. So I'd love to hear what you've been up to what you've been reading, what you're going to try to cram in before the end of the year, anything about notes, anything like that. Let me know in the comment section down below. Again, Merry Christmas if you celebrate Christmas. If not, uh, I hope you enjoyed this Friday Reads video anyway and can forgive me for the crass the Christmas commercial stuff. So anyway, as always, I really appreciate your time. I have recorded another video for tomorrow, so Merry Christmas. And I'm going to try to record another video that we'll post while we are gone because we, we won't be back until later in the week. So there's a chance that the only videos you get from me are the one that we'll be uh, posting on Sunday and the one at Friday Reads for later in the year. And then we're at the end of the year. So I'll see what I can do. Uh, try to get something in. Uh, I hope you enjoy this downtime. If you have downtime, if not, I hope you're doing well. And uh, I, again, I really appreciate it. I uh, have my blooper video ready to go <laughs> actually that so you'll have that one regardless um next week because i just I'll, it's edited i just need to uh schedule it so you'll have that because that is always my booktube anniversary video uh i posted my my first videos were uh, the last one at the very end of 2018 um, I did my, I think I, I did a review and then I did my best reads of 2018 and my worst reads of 2018. Those were my very first videos on my channel. So, uh, I'll have that. That's always my anniversary present to myself. Thank you for now three great years on booktube. Looking forward to f the fourth one and, uh, I will be back until next time. Happy reading.